Today's is the first session on JavaScript foundations, and it is on array functions, in particularly map, filter, and reduce. And um, I'm Vivek Agarwal. And the main uh, main reason for keeping this session is to you know um, to explain a little bit more about the reduce function because I've seen like over many weeks, many months that reduce is the most powerful and the most flexible array function yet it's the most underutilized and most misunderstood uh, array function so we'll start with map and please feel free to ask me any questions okay please feel free to interrupt me and ask any questions in middle so every array function basically you know iterates through each and every item of the array okay so a map function takes in a callback function a function is passed in as an argument in javascript it is called a callback function or an argument function and it it keeps receiving one each item of the original array one by one so it receives the first item and then based on the logic written in the function suppose we have written that uh, we need to return the first and the last item so it will do the processing and return the um, return the name in which we have concatenated the first and the last name. So this is the mental model behind the map function. Uh, it is quite important to you know get familiar with the with the thought process behind a function before um, before getting into actual implementation. So we can see that the the value that we return from the callback function becomes an item of the new array and this is really important we'll see why in just a bit okay so let's look into an example now so we have a developers array for example okay so it has a few fields like first last department commits and i'll comment these out and now we need to return something like you know um, something like uh, john and so on okay so we need to concat the first name and the last name and return an array and here since we are returning the exact same number of items as the original array and we are doing some manipulations on the way so map is a great function for that so we start with the array and we call the map function on that array it takes in a function that function gets access to each item of the array we can name it anything we can name it item we can name it person anything and then we return anything from the you know we can extract anything from the person we have this complete thing available to us so let us return the item dot first okay and we can save this in a brand new array. So let mapped array is equal to the result of the map function. And if we save it, we'll see that we get a new array with, with first name of all the three developers in our original array. Okay, any questions here? I will take it as a no. Okay, so I'll summarize the map function. David, so, can, yeah. yeah, please. Can you just, I mean, elaborate about that let? Yeah, yeah, sure, dear. Okay, uh, so let is just like, you know, uh, there are three ways to uh, declare variables in JavaScript, var, let, and const. Okay, um, let is, 
just a way of declaring variable from ES6 onwards. And there are some subtle differences. For example, um, Rajiv, actually, uh, it will need a bit of examples, but you know, um, a very you know, a very common thing is that um, var is function scoped and let is block scoped. So what do I mean by that? Uh, suppose I have a function here. I have a variable here called suppose uh, var Rajiv, okay, equals equals to say for example I'll give it a number, okay, and I have a function here. Uh, say function anything, x y z. And uh, here again, you know, I have uh, Rajiv, okay, uh, var or anything else, suppose var Mohit, okay. So I have a variable inside, inside a function here, okay. So the scope of this Mohit remains, you know, in this function, but anywhere else, uh, you know, if we use, for example, curly brackets, if we use if else anywhere. So anywhere we use these uh, these curly brackets, that, that is called a block scope. Actually, uh, it does not respect, var does not respect that block scope. It just pollutes out to the, you know, global scope. So if I have declared anything here, okay, so that is actually present in the global scope. So that can be called as, you know, one uh, major difference between um, var and let block scope versus the function scope. Rest, everything mostly remains the same. And yeah, in the foundation series, one complete uh, session we are planning to take that is on differences between var, let, const, and the arrow functions and the normal functions. So for now, I think uh, uh, the let is, block scoped and var is function scoped. I think that can be a reasonable answer for now. Yeah, yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, dear. Okay, so uh, regarding the map function, uh, so if we need a new array with exact same number of items as the old one, it's a great candidate. There is no way to skip any elements in a map call and map takes a function as an argument and arguments get each item of the array and return from the argument function becomes the item of the new array, okay? And uh, now let's move into filter function. So filter again, you know, uh, takes in an argument function and uh, it get, gets access to each item one by one. Yeah, the important thing is uh, how it handles what we return from the uh, argument function. So in the map function, if this argument function returned a name, suppose John, so it used to become the new item of our new array, okay? In the filter function, if it receives any truthy value, we get this item in the new array. If it returns a falsy value, this item is just skipped and filtered out from the array. In JavaScript, zero, null, undefined, false, and nan, and empty string. These are falsy values. Rest everything else is a truthy value. Okay. So for example, in the first iteration, it gets this particular item. We write a logic which returns basically say true. True is a truthy value. So this item will be retained in our new array. Then it moves to the next item based on the logic that we have written inside the argument function, if it returns false, the item will be, it, it won't be included, it will be excluded from the new array. And uh, similarly, you know, if the third item returns true or any of the truthy values, it is retained in the array, okay? And uh, I have prepared again a very simple example of of filter functions. Again, I have used the same array. So, you know, it's simple for us. And here, you know, um, 
this is the developers array. I have called filter function on it. It takes an uh, argument function. It gets access to each item one by one. And I have returned item dot departments equal to BE. So at any iteration, item dot department equals to BE can either be true or false. Okay. So for the first iteration, it will be false. So it will be excluded. For the second department B is true. So we will get that as a part of our new array, filtered array. And for the third iteration, again, department B is true. So we will get this third item as a part of our array. Okay, let's save it. And see what we get. So as a result, we get an array of two objects with both the backend developers. Okay. Um, any questions or shall we move to the most complicated one, the reduce function? Okay, let's move to the reduce function. Is it, is it, does it make sense, um, the difference between filter and map? So the major difference is, is how the return value is you know, handled in filtered and map. Okay. Okay, so how reduce function is actually the most general purpose of all of them. And the reason for the confusion is, you know, usually reduce function is defined as, you know, if you want to reduce things to one value or most of the definitions and images that we see online, they are like kind of deceptive. Actually reduce is the most general purpose and the most powerful function. And if you look at the frameworks like React and all, so much of the source code is written in reduce function, okay? So the reduce function takes in a function and an initial value. So this initial value makes it a bit different from um, the map and the filter function. The initial value is usually of the same shape of the return value. We'll just look at it in a bit. And the argument function receives each item of the array. This is again same as map, but at the same time, it also has access to an accumulated value on every iteration. Okay, we'll look at it with an example, then it will make much more sense. So uh, this is an array we are calling a reduce function here. Hmm. And this reduce function takes in a callback function and an initial value, okay? We want result to be something like this, you know? Um, even though this is an array, we need an object with a property backend with list of all the backend developers and the second property frontend with list of all the frontend developers. So it's a fairly complicated task. At the same time, you know, it's a very real world task. You know, usually we have to massage the data that we receive from API calls. So here, um, the reduce function can take anything. So it gets access to the very first item in the first iteration. And in the very first iteration, the accumulated value is the initial value that we have provided, okay? And we write some logic. For example, we write that um, if we check if the department is front-end, then accumulated values back-end property add or push one more item to it, okay? So this way, um, here we can add one item to the accumulated value. Now for the second iteration, uh, can someone tell me um, what is the accumulated value or um, please feel free to unmute and tell me um, what access to what all items do we have? So I know we are, I'm, we are moving on the right track. Hmm? Anyone? B would be James, no, Jane, sorry, Jane. Right, right. Thanks, Shubhajit. Uh, so basically the return of the last iteration is our accumulator of the current iteration. So in the very first iteration, we added John to the FE. Okay. So in the second iteration, our accumulator is exactly same thing, which we see here in the right. 
this is our accumulator and our current item is this uh, the first chain thing so again we get access to the item we can write some logic and we can maybe you know add something to the back end okay so this is a bit important that what we return from a reduce function becomes the accumulator for the next iteration hopefully our example will make it a bit more clear okay so we have the same array uh, developers array with uh, first name uh, with john jane and james okay and i will maybe comment it out and we'll write everything from scratch okay so to begin with we need data in in this format and uh, all the backend names of all the backend developers must be listed here james and jane and all the front end developers name must be listed here okay so how would we do it normally uh, using javascript so let's try it using reduce function and the basic purpose of reduce function is this when we need to drastically change maybe uh, data's format so we will declare a new array called reduced array and we will call reduce function on the developers array okay so it takes in one function a callback function and an initial value and the initial value is of the same shape as the end result that we want so we want an object with a key of backend and of course we can make this dynamic so things keeps adding on its own and front end which is again an empty array to begin with okay why is it complaining fe and pe okay now um, in every iteration we are getting access to accumulator and the current item okay now we have to check if the current items department is backend then we need to push the item to accumulators backend property does this line of code make any sense dot name else accumulator dot b dot push dot fe dot push item dot name and we can and then we return the accumulator i have made some mistake here i don't know what yeah i'm getting blank because of so many you know champions sitting right in front of me so i'm my mind is getting all blank okay so um here um we get you know what we were looking for no it is undefined yeah, variable uh, name of item dot first or item dot last ah <laughs> thank you mohit item dot first le lete yeah so we have our you know result in a completely different format the way we wanted it okay if anyone needs any explanation in this line of code kindly feel free to ask you know basically what we are doing it in every iteration we are checking 
if the item department is BE, we are pushing that item's first name to the accumulator's backend property. Else we are putting pushing the item's first name to the accumulator's front end property. As simple as that. Okay. So I mean it's worth investing some time, the reduce function. It makes our code much more cleaner and much more, you know, and once we start to understand it, once we are, you know, comfortable with the mental model behind it, that's why, you know, I took this time to, you know, make sure that uh, we are clear with how it works, okay? So in every iteration, we get the item, we get the accumulator, and the re return of the argument function becomes our, you know, next items accumulator. So this is, is this pretty much it. Sensitive? Yeah, please. Is this case sensitive? Um, okay. Yeah, map and uh, reduce. Yeah, they are case sensitive. All these functions are case sensitive, right? Yes, yes, Kiran. Oh. Okay, dear. So, you know, to summarize quickly, the reduce function is the most general purpose of all the array functions. Reduce function can return anything. You know, it can return object, it can return a single string value, it can return a number. And it takes an argument function and an initial value. Argument function gets each item of the old array one by one. And argument function also has access to an accumulated value on every iteration. So this last line makes reduce, you know, one of the most powerful functions.